Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of my painting One Lane Bridge 2 in Hatboro, PA. This is actually a watercolor collage, and by that I mean I am painting on a collaged surface with watercolor paint. Down the street from my house, there's a beautiful little one lane bridge. It's very charming. Drivers pause and take turns to go over the bridge. Seen from the side view, down in the park be below it, it presents a very pretty picture. I've taken a lot of photographs here to use as references. and I'm inspired to paint all through the different seasons when I see this view of this one lane bridge in Hepburn. Now On the topic of collage, watercolor paintings, all kinds of paintings don't always work. I had a couple of paintings that were very poorly executed. I did something wrong and I don't even know what it was, but they didn't turn out. And since I'm not one to be wasteful, I took the paintings that I did not like. I coated the paper surface with a watered down white glue and then built up strips of very lightweight rice paper, torn strips crisscrossing all different directions and scrunched around. When they dried, you could see an image showing through from below from the painting that wasn't working. And that's what I then painted on. It's been a source of a lot of interesting works. Now let's paint. Here's how the paper looked when I started. There's a barely seen image of a painting that didn't work underneath, and I'm sketching on top of that with a piece of white pastel. I'm sketching in the scene for my visit down to the park down the street. This is a fall composition. So the first thing I'm doing is painting in the background colors with the little woods that are across the street from the stream and from the bridge. Using some nice warm colors. One of the challenges of painting on a collaged rice paper surface like this is that the rice paper is very absorbent. It takes a lot of the paint, sucks it into the surface, and then when it dries, it's very light. So more paint than normal has to be used. And as you know, watercolor always fades as it dries. So this will fade even more. It's a matter of patience. And if you like the cool textures that you can get from the painting on this kind of surface, it's worth the patience because it makes a truly unique surface. I mentioned also that I used a watered down white glue. If you don't water down the glue, it can create a waterproof surface that you cannot watercolor on top of. The paper has to be somewhat absorbent for the paint to go in and to stay on. And if you use a thick glue of any kind, it will just simply repel the pigment of watercolor. I'm sketching in the bridge according to my white pastel lines with paint now. After I finish sketching in the colors, I can get rid of the white pastel so it does not interfere with my watercolor painting later. I have to use ruler to get the right perspective. There was a nice strong sunlight coming from the right side of the picture. So the left side bank is quite lit up and the right side bank is more shaded. 
that that establishes some good strong darks and lights to follow to create the visual balance for the painting. There was also a tree coming up in front of my picture surface and I moved the location of the tree because it didn't work where it was coming up. I could put a tree anywhere I want. I don't have to paint it in where it happens to be growing. I can move things around, I can add things on, and I can take things off if they're not working. Now I'm walk, working all around the picture surface, laying out the composition, laying out the bridge, and coming back to the background to sketch in some darker colors and to form out the little forest area. And then there's a whole other little tiny view that you see underneath the bridge, where the water goes underneath, and we see a bit of what's on the other side of the bridge. That side goes into private property, so I've never been able to walk back there and see exactly what's there. I imagine it's more of the same, but I am curious. Once my composition has been defined with paint, I go in and start to build up more colors and stronger formations and layer in the glazes that will create all the parts of this painting. From the shadows under the bridge to the grasses and leaves on the banks. A lot of adjusting on this bridge though. I just couldn't seem to get the angles quite right. So I went back to them a number of times. Eventually I got it to my satisfaction. I've built up more colors in this shot, and you can see them starting to come on and give more structure to the entire painting. Here I'm using a white gouache to build up some light areas of the bridge and make them stand out. and more adjustment of the bridge and its railings and the dimensions and where the rock work goes and just how long everything is. You could see me locking my fingers into a measuring tool and I do use this tool frequently. If you can keep your fingers at a still angle you can move around and do comparison measurements just like you would with a roller. I'm now erasing a lot of the white lines Again, so that white pastel does not interfere with my watercolor because it will mix with the watercolor paint and cause it to be too light. So I do need to erase it in areas where I do not want it to mix. Now I'm finding another tree along the bank and I'm finding some trees in the background as well and bringing them out more. I'm forming out the parts of the bridge and making them a little bit more clear with some shadows.
starting to form the rails of the bridge. Measuring where the stone part of the bridge is using my locked in finger system as you just saw. and forming out where that banister or that railing of the bridge goes up by painting darks around it, which is called negative painting. And the same thing on the left. And you can see the bridge forming as I paint between the rails. Now that thing coming up in the front there on the right side is a tree. And that tree is going to need a lot of work. Because right now it's just blending into the whole picture. In the meantime, I'm working on the background, I'm working on the banks, and I'm working on the bridge. Skipping around the painting, finding different areas, and forming them out more fully. And I just decided to put another tree in. So there it is growing on up. Here comes another tree I just decided to add. And then I began some stonework on the bridge. I don't know the age of this bridge or the stonework, but I think it's pretty old. Now I'm beginning to work on the water that flows through the stream bed, which happens to be called the Pennypack Creek. It's actually part of the Pennypack Creek, which is a big water system that runs all through my area. An absolutely beautiful stream and creek. It draws a lot of wildlife. It's a good, clean water system. Children like to play. I've seen fish, turtles, frogs, all kinds of water birds. It's a pleasure to live close to such a beautiful stream. So what I'm doing with this stream is reflecting the colors of the distant trees. I'm reflecting the white or light colors of the bridge I'm reflecting the dark shadow that goes underneath the bridge. And as the water comes through, it runs into some varying depths. So it changes colors, it changes reflectivity, it runs into rocks, which also causes it to break up. And it's quite interesting to look at. It also changes colors according to the weather, the time of the day, and the season something I enjoy observing. And painting water is an interesting combination between doing a lot of horizontal work 
and doing some vertical reflections. And you'll have to pay attention to the water that you're painting so that you can see exactly what it looks like and try to paint it like it looks. I've just sprayed down the background with water and I'm going in with some colors that I want to blur around a bit. I decided I wanted it to be a little brighter for the fall. I'm building up some colors right around the light structures of the bridge itself, which will cause the bridge to stand out more. Light against dark accent. One of the tools that you want to look at in your own paintings. Coming down to the shoreline, I'm adding some strong darks to form out some areas of shadows, rocks, wet bank, and shading, grassy areas, weedy areas, textures. Also, the more I paint around that tree, the more the tree will stand out, because it's a fairly light tree, uh, actually a sycamore which has a lot of white bark in this particular tree. The area under the bridge is fairly dark also, more in shade and shadow. And that provides a nice foil for the bridge to stand out against. There's some rocks under the bridge as well. And then I'm showing how the structure of the bridge goes up the bank and underneath the bridge with the ledges and, and such. If I darken between the planks of the bridge itself, then the bridge will stand out more again. Light against dark. Continue to build up colors and glazes. And you can see the painting starting to come together but it's still not fully developed and this painting will take a long time to finish. It has a lot of areas. And they all need to be developed to the whatever point that I choose to develop them. Now I'm developing the tree that grows up in the foreground of the picture. Adding some darks on the left. Adding more darks around the bridge. And you can see that I've darkened the area where the water meets the shore on both sides of the painting. This is a pretty natural and easy place to darken because water makes the dirt and the rocks and anything along the shore much darker when it gets wet. Now I'm detailing some of the rocks along the shore in the foreground and building up more darks along the shoreline on both sides of the painting. Bringing out some rocks that are actually in the water itself. And it looks to me like I will need to be adding some white gouache on the tops of these rocks to make them stand out with light as well as dark.
I'm bringing out the rocks under the bridge as well and going up the sides of the shoreline and adding yet another layer to the foreground rocks. I'm not using black in this painting. Black is a harsh color in nature. It stands out in a way that it doesn't always look natural. Black is a good color for a more graphic type of approach to painting. In a natural watercolor, it is very dangerous to use if you want to have a natural look. So it's just something I don't do. I'm more likely to mix together some good dark uh, umbers, burnt siennas, Van Dyke browns with some indigo. There's also a color called Payne's Gray. And Payne's Gray tends to fade a lot, but if you put it on a number of times, you can glaze up a good dark color using that. Other colors to mix with browns would be a deep purple or a deep green. Sometimes even alizarin crimson mixed with a deep brown will make a good, strong dark. That's not quite as unnatural looking as black. And continuing to build up and glaze the colors. More and more layers going on. Now I come back to the tree along the foreground and bring that up. Some more with some good strong darks. I also bring some lights in on the light side, which is the right side. These trees are being lit from the right, so I bring a shadow up to their left behind them, and the shadow goes right up the slope. And I'm adding some branches that go into diagonals coming off of the tree in the foreground and some smaller branches coming off the other trees. These diagonals add a nice little contrast to all the up and down of the verticality of the trees as well as the back and forth of the bridge and the water. It seems that whenever I have a good strong dark on my brush, I go back and hit up some other areas to make them even darker and enhance the accents. Because when you have paint on your brush, you might as well use it. And if you have some mixed up in your palette, again, you might as well use it if it's in a suitable place. I'm bringing out the rock that are in the stream and bringing up the tree that's growing up on the right side foreground, or middle ground, I should say. And adding some more branches. At this point in my painting, I am doing detailing. I am coming in and working on small areas, bringing out stronger darks, bringing out smaller branches. I will begin back to the water and 
bringing out some more of the darks and lights and patterns that are seen there. But the painting is well toward being completed at this point. All these little details are added at what I think is the right point and the right places. Every artist will make their own decisions about how much detail or how little detail they want to add to their painting. Coming back and detailing the foreground tree some more. And now I've taken my white pastel and I'm marking where I want to add some lights in the painting. I am wetting down the water area of the stream. And once it's wet, I will begin to paint in some deeper colors. I, do, I want them to be loose and flowing, and they will do that much better on wet paper than they will on dry. Some vague reflections from the trees in the background. And some good strong darks. These are moving waters going over shallows and deeps and rocks. So reflections are quite broken by the currents and by what's there in the water itself. But there are some reflections and some good colors reflected as well. You can see my iPad on the right. I'm referencing two different photographs that I took of this particular scene. As I work, I'm going back and forth between them. And I'm adding more layers of color because everything got light when it dried. What I was doing with my brush there was lining it up to distant trees in the background so that they would reflect directly below the, dis the trees' reflections in the water. And for the sake of being realistic, I don't want to have a tree reflected that's not even there or a reflection in the wrong position because that would be sort of dumb. Although I've done it many times. And I've made a lot of foolish mistakes in my paintings over the years. This is the line of the bridge, and what goes directly above the bridge is that stronger dark. So I'm bringing that in to show in the water below. That shadow that I just was working on is from the underside of the bridge, which is reflecting into the water. And I'm returning with my white gouache I'm lighting up some of the rocks, some of the shoreline on the left side, and the right side of some of the trees. And 
And I'm looking at my reference picture and seeing what areas are lit up. And wherever I see a light or a bright or a highlight, I'm coming in with that gouache. I could paint watercolor on top of the gouache and turn it into a color as well. But for right now, I'm just using it to light things up. And I'm lighting up my reflection area. under the bridge. Returning with some darks to shade and shadow around the lights. Adding some textural areas in the front left foreground for all the leaves and little bumpy textures that I saw there in the photograph. I'm doing some detailing in the bark of the foreground tree. I've mixed some white gouache with a little gold paint and I'm lighting up the right side where the sunlight is striking a little more strongly. I'm also painting some barky textures in and now I'm putting in a pale colored branch which was growing up in front of the bridge. I'm detailing this branch some more with some darks. I'm adding some dark accents as well as some accents in burnt sienna to the tree. as well as some of the other trees. Adding another branch in a dark color, which sycamore trees do have dark branches, light branches, and all different color bark. And some more darks to the water as well as the shoreline. Finishing touches are going on here. It's been a long process, but the painting is coming together in a way that's satisfying to what I was hoping for.
you know, when you've been working on a painting for a long time and it's so intricate and takes a while to come together, it feels almost like a triumph to be finally finishing it and saying, okay, I can't see much more to do. I'm fairly satisfied. Getting your signature on it, being completed, that's a very good feeling. And I'm already looking forward to my next painting. Covering up both sides one at a time, what's needed, what looks completed. When it's all finished, I will get my name signed and be done. And on to the next one. I hope you've enjoyed this video demonstration. Give it a thumbs up if you do. Check out the links below because there's links to products that I use, as well as to my Facebook page. There's also links to my blog, my products page. And you all have a good day, and I'll see you next video.